Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about this, a little bit of that, and a whole lot of Missoula coming to you guys live from the MCAT studios here in Missoula, Montana. Channel 189, Charter Spectrum, Cable, blah, 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 all that other word and all that fun jazz. I got a uh, flagship Friday for you guys today. I got Pre-Critic. Hey, and it is the first Friday of the month, so I'm going to give you guys your downtown Missoula art guide later in the show. I also have a little bit of city council, so it'll take up a little bit of time, so... Let's get going. Let's talk about some weather. It's uh, a <laughs> crazy weather we've been having. It has been crazy. Uh, there's a wind advisory in effect for tonight. 90% chances of rain and breezy weather all happening today. Luckily, I'll be inside most of the day, which is good. Um, tonight, there's going to be an 80 to 40% chances uh, transitioning out of this storm that's going to be passing through with lows in the 35, highs in the 50s. And then by this weekend, it'll be pretty much in the uh, 40s and 30s all weekend long with rain mixtures, all sorts of rains, breeze, patchy fog, a lot of different um, types of uh, overcast type weather with rain. So that's what you guys can expect this weekend as well. All right, let's talk about some news that are happening. A third person suspected of involvement in double homicide in Missoula, just uh, next to curves, uh, next to, of course, they probably don't like the publicity, but um, there's been a double homicide there in a Missoula motel two weeks ago. Um, a woman has been arrested uh, as a person of interest in the uh, double homicide. Confederate Salish Kootenai uh, Tribal Police and Lake County Sheriff's deputies arrested Labenza Charlo, 18, on an outstanding warrant from Missoula County, Missoula Police Department, said on a Facebook post Thursday morning. Two, suspe two suspects, 27-year-old Jonathan Whitworth and 18-year-old Preston uh, Rosbach, have um, been jailed on homicide charges and held on a $250,000 bail each. In other local news, Missouri Development Ag Agency are looking for redeveloping the Zerk uh, Pinwell building off of the hip strip. The building was built in 1910 and holds residents and businesses alike, like Shakespeare and Company. Uh, they want to keep the building in its original form um, and state, but they want to, um, at the same time, they want to modernize and uh, get update. While many tenants have enjoyed the low rent, some even having rent as low as $300 a month are worried that they will be priced out of their homes and businesses. Missoula's housing prices have jumped more than 30% since 2010, while wages have stagnated, but local organizations are working to develop it develop affordable options. Homeward, a uh, nonprofit in Missoula is looking for people who make less than an area medium in median income to purchase affordable re refurbished homes near the Missoula Food Bank, uh, which is either 100,000 or one bedroom or 125,000 for a two bedroom, far below Missoula's medium sale prices, which is over $280,000. Applications are due by November 7th, and you can find out more information by calling Homeward and uh, emailing them um, but you can call them at 532-4663, otherwise known at, uh, or uh, again, that number is 532-4663. In state news, the Libertarian candidate of Montana's U.S. Senate race through his support behind a Republican um, candidate, Matt Rosendale, Libertarian Brick, uh, Rick Brickenridge has virtually no chance of winning and hasn't, and hasn't dropped out with uh, voting already underway. Um, most of... Uh, T most of the time before the ballot even sent out, pe if people want to uh, get off the ballot, they have to apply by September. Uh, of course, he sent out a mailer, which is kind of like a handbill, which said Brecken Bale, uh, Breckenridge supports Rosendale. But of course, the Montana Libertarian Party uh, chairman, Francis Went disavowed Breckenridge's comments supporting Rosendale, saying that this uh, undermines the, what the Libertarian uh, Party is all about. Went said this could make it harder for the party to qualify on future ballots if fewer votes backed Libertarians on November 6th. Um, Breckenbeck said he disagrees with Rosendale on some issues, part uh, particularly the Republican support for building a wall U.S.-Mexican border, and shared Tester's concern about Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh's stance on privacy issues. But dark money in elections is more important, uh, which is why Breckenridge is throwing support behind Rosendale. The race, race might even get tighter as the Libertarian Party is small, but the election is so, uh, again, it's getting really close, and there's always a percentage of people who vote Libertarian, and also if the, a lot of Libertarians were to throw their support to Matt Rosendale, that could also uh, offset some of the things. So there's a come th some th politics that are happening. There's always a bunch of, like, things last minute, but um, many, peop many um, people... Uh, um, um, 
the, the race might, uh, let's see, regardless of candidates dropping out, September was the last chance to change the ballot. All right, sorry, I'm, I'm reading my notes and I'm also talking to you. So let's move on to the next thing. Of course, Google walked out. Um, if your Google search may not uh, be working, uh, Google employees worldwide are walking out of the job to protest the company's treatment of women and its handling of sexual assault cases. Organizations are calling for an end to force a arbitration, a uh, commitment from the company to end pay and opportunity inequality, a publicly disclosed sexual harassment transparency report, and a safe and anonymous process for reporting sexual misconduct at Google. The employee's protest comes a week after the New York Times published an extensive report on sexual harassment at the company. Andy Rubin, the creator of an Android software operating system, was accused by a female colleague of coercing her to perform oral sex on him in 2013 in the Times report of this. Google reportedly found the allegations credible, asked his for his resignation, and gave him an exit package worth $90 million. Um, of course, demands related to this protest that the Google wor workforce gender makeup only 31% of its global workforce and just over a quarter of executives are women. Organizations are asking for a clear, uniform, global, inclusive process for reporting sexual misconduct safely and anonymously. anonymously. All right, so that's kind of what's happening in the news in and around the world today. Um, here's a little uh, bit of new programs, and when I come back, I'm going to talk to you guys about some of the movies that are coming out this weekend and why not to see them. So stay with me. I realize now that most of them were there for plastic surgery or detox, but my father never mentioned anything about their illness. He'd just say that so-and-so had checked in for a few days, and he'd pass on to us the opinion of the staff. This one was a prima donna. That other one was down to earth. I wondered what words the staff used to, to describe my father. Exacting was the word my mother favored. Your father's an exacting man, she'd tell us over dinner, arching one eyebrow ironically to let us know that she meant more than she was saying. There's a book by Mortimer Adler called How to Read a Book Book. And it's fantastic. The basic point of the book is how to read a book. It's critical analysis, critical thinking, engaging the author in a dialogue. This author spent a lot of time writing this book. So at the very least, you as a reader should spend as much time engaging the author, whether you agree, asking yourself to agree or disagree with what the author of this book said. And um, it's, 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 I give the book to friends, family, sons, and all that. I just think it's, it's such a great book. The reason I'm up here is because some folks have contacted me over the last few days indicating that the level of antagonism that is beginning to happen between different kinds of people or different kinds of groups and different strategic discussions or people's different thoughts about the elections has made it actually feel unsafe for people to come. And there are some people who chose not to come tonight because they are worried about the level of animosity. Um, and so I want to just put in a huge plug um, for the fact that people would not be here doing the work they're doing if they did not care passionately about the world that we're living in. Um, I don't know if folks heard that there was an election in Brazil. Um, that is one of the more scary events happening um, globally. And, and, and I use the word fascist without any quotation marks or without any risk of hyperbole, that there is in fact an elected fascist now leading the fifth largest country in the world. Um, and Trump was very quick to congratulate him on that victory. It is fun, and I'm going to continue doing it, but like, it's nice to have my backlist put up self-publishing and become what is called a hybrid author. I do very well doing it that way, because that way I can stipend my income, I can use those, that money that I know I'm going to have to pay taxes on and invest it in myself instead of paying taxes on it, and be smart about my money. And I talk to my CPA, and I, we sit and have honest conversations, like how can I save from paying $10,000 this year in taxes, or $20,000, or whatever? And she's like, well, invest. Invest in yourself. Do advertising. So by then, you'll see a lot of my stuff on Facebook in December. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. Invest in yourself. Be honest with yourself about what you're going to make. And, and try to stipend your income as much as you can if you're trying to go traditional. I like movies. Do you like movies? 
Me neither. Let's talk about Pre-Critic. Hey, movies are coming out this weekend. Hey, do you like Alice in Wonderland? Mm, me neither. Do you like uh, being forced to go see your niece's uh, ballet performances of the Nutcracker Suite? Uh, well, here's a movie that's going to kind of encompass all that and more. It's called Alice Through the, working, uh, Alice through the CGI. I mean, um, actually, it's called um, The Nutcracker and the Four Realms. So apparently... It's a movie that's coming out, and uh, if you have saw any advertisements, it's in 3D. It has Hale Mirren, which, you know, she's a good actress and do all this stuff. And uh, Morgan Freeman, who is, uh, I think he's under investigation. Uh, like uh, any public domain ballet comes yet another version of the Nutcracker. So lace up your slippers and get your nuts cracking because you're in for a ride through the land of ooh. Or Alice in Wonderland. I, 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 it's a CGI-filled world. Who cares? Why are you trying to make CGI-heavy movies? Um, Live-action movies have been a mixed bag, and nothing really quite captures them as I like Disney, like Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't know. Uh, you can lead an actor to a Disney movie, but you can't make them an animated feature. Up next, we got, hey, it's Freddie Mercury, and uh, has come back in the f um, form of, of Rami Malek, who has to carry the role of a based on a true story about Queen. Uh, watch this movie about a group of people try to understand a tortured soul, self-tortured, mind you, uh, try, to, to, try to navigate a life through the eyes of a man who never admitted he was gay until the last days of his life. Of course, anyways, watch this movie that uh, for fans can learn about the band Queen. Um, did you know also the band Queen um, did the soundtrack for Highlander? That's pretty interesting. Why don't they make a movie about that? Uh, up next, we got Tiffany Haddish's back again, once again, and again, uh, in a movie where she's released from prison and reunited for with her reluctant sister. Okay, I'm already going to tell you this. A lot of comedy ensues. Um, one thing leads to another, and she's into a serious situation. Uh, of course, she deals with it in a comedic tone. And as a result, she gets thrown in prison by doing the right thing. But then her sister comes back and is like, hey, I got you. And that's kind of the movie in a nutshell. It's called Nobody's Fool. All right. So that's kind of what all those movies are all about this weekend and, and whatnot. I have a movie for you guys. And it's basically, I asked uh, these kids, it's like, hey, how about, this is Flagship Friday, just so you guys know. And I worked with some of the kids at some of the uh, local schools here in Missoula. And I said, hey, why don't you just make a slumber movie, slumber, a slumber party movie where nothing happens. So here's this. And when I come back, I'll talk about your city council. I don't have anything to 
supposed to whisper. Will you stop whispering to me? Let's get this slumber party in gear! You are this close to going home. She's right. Yeah, duh. Let's tell ghost stories! No. This is not a horror film. Now let's start the activities. Everyone, partner up! <laughs> hey, bestie. Hello, <laughs> partner. You know what? We don't need partners. I'm just reading all this off a script. Wait, wait, what script? Whenever you have a sleepover, make sure you have plenty of things to do. Boo! Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some public safety and health. So, in public safety and health, and the city council, they are... Uh, talking about building a or uh, creating a new council for the city of Missoula in terms of jail diversion and working with the uh, criminal justice system to help um, kind of curve and deal with the over po overcrowding population at the Missoula County Jail. So that's, that's time to talk a little bit about city council. Um, the, the, uh, the criminal justice coordinating council will provide a form for stakeholders, leaders, from the criminal justice agency, general governments, and uh, communities in Missoula County to discuss and prioritize justice and public safety issues. Michelle Cares talks about the increase in prison populations and a little bit more about this topic. So you may know um, that five, the U.S. constitutes 5% of the world population and 25% of the world's incarcerated or detained population. The city of Missoula has been, and the county both have been investing their time in criminal justice issues over the past couple years at sort of an increasing pace. Um, many of you I know are familiar with the Jail Diversion Master Plan where we, <clears throat> we both the city and the county invested in a study to be created and after that creation the city and county addressed 30 of the 40 recommendations um, that didn't bring us here today but it's not unrelated it certainly is a indicator of investment in criminal justice issues um, alright so that was kind of like the brief in introduction into this topic, um, we have, you know, jail diversion programs are used in Missoula and have gone back and forth with support and um, and funding mostly is the the issue that they had. Um, MCAT has a couple done a couple shoots where some employers like uh, like the idea of having these folks where they have parole officers to call in case they don't show up for work. It's kind of like a kind of a checks and balance systems. And a lot of times, um, Workers that don't have patrol officers or people or like uh, like a parental type of, uh, of authority figure uh, to make sure that people go to work. Um, sometimes their employees can be unreliable. But with a lot of times with the jail diversion program, a lot of times the uh, 
uh, people who are just out of jail with the parole officers are better at keeping up with their job. So some of the things is uh, th th why a lot of uh, uh, employers here in town have actually enjoyed some of the jail diversion programs. Um, so one of the things they want to emphasize is the jail diversion programs, but also there's many other programs they want to get to in terms of this. And this is uh, County Commissioner Cola Rowley, who's uh, talking a little bit more about this. And so we're really trying to pull everybody together in a united front beyond what each of us can do alone. We've had a lot of successes. A lot of people have had successes in their own departments. But I think we realize that really to take it to the next level, um, we have to do more than what we can do in our own department or our own um, jurisdiction even. And so on October 25th, the commissioners considered and passed a resolution to form the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council to provide an overarching cross-jurisdictional governance structure for all of these efforts and to bring outside partners and stakeholders to the table for their expertise. All right, and some of the uh, folks that they have are uh, Mayor John Engen of the city of Missoula. Uh, they're looking at uh, Judge Jenks, who is also one of the people who are spearheading it from the uh, county courthouse, and others from the city and the police departments are working together to help folks who need more help than to serve time in prison uh they their next goal and they're looking for like low risk offenders first and foremost because it's not only about uh jail diversion but it's also public safety so they want to emphasize whether or not the per people that they're releasing on a workers program are uh of safety uh, are of safety to the public um th their next goal is to hire a director and data analysis to make sure these programs move forward and move in large part um with uh funding as well. So that one of the things that they did is Aaron Townsend with Grants Administration for the City of Missoula talking about the MacArthur Grant, which the City of Missoula was able to get um, for, these, for the uh, CJCC. We had initially asked or proposed six strategies. We've toned it down to five because we did get a little less. We initially asked for $1.1 million and got the 700000 which is still really great. Um, the first strategy is implementing front-end jail diversion with law enforcement, and that's something that we'll work on with them, but doing things like site and release policies, some implicit bias training, things like that, um, and also working with them to see what kind of training needs they need. Um, also supporting prosecutor-led diversion efforts. Uh, Kirsten Papps, who's our county attorney, has been working on a prosecutor-led diversion project called Calibrate, and this would hire a uh, social worker to work in her office to do this very early diversion of people to try to get them into ser needed services instead of going into incarceration. It would be like first time uh, low risk offenders. All right, so uh, $700,000 is going to basically help start up the uh, CJCC to help start up this uh, 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 community wide effort to help jail diversion. Um, emphasize on public safety, social services, and basically help uh, people who are in jail get out of jail and be reintegrated into uh, society in general. So this resolution is to see if the city will approve this program, which they say will improve the criminal justice system. It's not going to fix the criminal justice system, but they're working on moving forward with improving it because it's not like a, a simple step. And a lot of this is finding a director and data analysis so they can come up with year uh, annual updates because they have a lot of different commissions and boards and stuff through the city of Missoula. And this would be a meeting, a public meeting, that they would emphasize and have a lot of input from the public as well as the council and have people come and kind of connect to each other to talk about this. And the purpose is to have public meetings and updates presented to the public. Um, so far, grants is a good way to start programs, but some of the issues during the meeting is to uh, ongoing payment process to keep this going so they can get it started with grants, but um, there's no guarantee that the money is going to keep on flowing for these programs. So one of the things that um, has to come up with the proposals to the city is for financial support. So uh, Heather Harp asks um, Michelle Cares this question. So, and this is what she had to say. Are you considering using or appointing someone to this, this council or perhaps you already have of someone who's actually been through the system? Because I think that's, that's the part that unless you actually have to deal with it, you can't solve for it. So if you could speak to that, please. Yeah, happily. They, there's a saying that says, nothing about us without us is for us. And we certainly want to engage the um, folks who have reentered society in this 
exercise. The MacArthur Foundation recently held a conference, and during that conference, they uh, um, asked a couple folks who were formerly incarcerated to give a panel, and they did a really good job of sort of communicating that same message. Um, you may or may not be familiar with a couple groups around town. It, regardless of their names, we um, have discussed who to invite, um, and we haven't come to an answer, but we certainly will invite someone. Okay. So, so far, they're in the process of hiring the director and having the things set up. But for uh, the most part, they want to look for uh, city council approval. It was, a board, it was already uh, approved through the uh, Missoula County. Um, so they're looking for the city to see if they can support it. So it's going to be a city county um, um, work together process that are going to move forward on this as well. So, of course, uh, nothing um, knows the criminal justice people like people who already work in the criminal justice system. So they're getting people who are judges, people who work with uh, so social workers that work with them, uh, case managers and all that stuff. The city moved uh, this to the consent agenda, which will be discussed. Uh, I, don't, I don't know exactly when the next meeting is because next Monday is the Monday that precedes Election Day. And a lot of times um, city council doesn't run on um, holidays, which is kind of considered that. Um, but there's no meeting on um, the 5th. But also there might be not another, there must be another non-meeting that happens the week after because it's Veterans Day on November 11th, which is a Sunday preceding the Monday. So city council might not meet for another uh like two or three weeks. So that's kind of what's happening. Uh, if you want to learn more information, like always, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. I think this is a very important issue, and you should look at this um, under the, uh, the, the guise of uh, public safety and health through the city of Missoula. All you got to do is search Missoula, and you can find anything that you want, including permits, um, actions, and all sorts of upcoming agendas, meetings, and more. All right, guys, I'm going to throw it to an art clip because I'm about to talk about some art that's going to be happening here in the city of Missoula because it's first Friday. So after this, I'll talk about where are the places you can go this first Friday because there's going to be a, a lot of art installations opening today um, and it'll be going on all month long here in the city of Missoula. So you get to go get it all, check it out tonight. And I'll talk to you about this and more after this. Hey guys, welcome back. I want to thank Rick Phillips. He goes out into the community, gets a couple art clips for you guys, pieces them together, and shows you a nice little taste of all the art in the city of Missoula while they're here. Uh, because before you know it, most of these art art installation things are all but forgotten. Um, I mean, you never know. Okay, so let's talk about a holiday show. So, hey, it's, it's never too early for the holidays, and at Radius Gallery, they're doing a holiday show. Um, Appealing to gift buyers and collectors alike, Radius Gallery's fifth annual holiday show features a broad array of high-quality orcs more by, by more than 100 local and regional artists at gift-level pricing. It's great. It celebrate creativity and honor the imagination this holiday season. And this is happening from November 2nd all the way through November, uh, December 24th. So you have two months to check it all out. Up next, we got Night Shift. Uh, John Ashley, um, Montana Natural History Center. This first Friday event will provide an opportunity to explore both Earth and sky at night. The evening features both John Ashley's gallery show, Night Shift. 
Montana's Nocturnal Animals and Programming with the Western Montana Astronomical Association. Um, join for an evening of education and art. View the gallery of uh, exceptional photographs taken by the naturalist and pho photographer, John Ashley. All right, up next, we got Ryan Lewis, and this is going to be at the Frontier Space. This month at the Frontier Space, they are excited to present uh, Everett Sanctuaries by Ryan Lewis. This exhibit features stop animated videos focusing on the topic of introversion. Um, it's about a complex needs to of introverts through object transformation, connect sculptures, material, and sound. Transform objects becomes metaphors to the exhibits. Uh, the often uncomfortable process of becoming uncharacteristically extroverted. All right. Up next, we got another art installation, and this is one at the Dana Gallery, and this is new artwork for Autumn. Autumn has just arrived in Montana. As the season changes, uh, actually Autumn arrived like a month ago, just so you guys know. But this is what it says. <laughs> so uh, join us. They welcome new paintings and sculptures by talented artists, including Aaron Hansel, Hansel, oh, it's Hansel, David Wilson, uh, Robert uh, Schlegel, Jennifer Lee, Caleb Meyer, and... Uh, uh, Ray Cobald, uh, as the daylight hours wane, the weather gets chilly. Come inside, warm up with the uh, Dana Gallery. Uh, this is going to be happening, yeah, it's Dana Gallery. It's right next to Four Ravens, um, which I also have later in my art show clip. Okay, Conjuring Color from the Winterscapes of Wonderland. This is going to be at Bernice's Bakery. Uh, traveling through Yellowstone in the winter feels like as uh, if they are traveling back in time to the early explorations of the park. It's untouched. untouched. It can be one of the co coldest, harshest environments in the region, but it is also a place where unexpected splashes of color appear out of the monochrome landscapes of white snow and gray skies. You can check all that out at Bernice's Bakery. Up next, we got B. Martinez. It's going to be at the Rattlesnake Market Cafe. It's pretty much the only uh, market if you go up the Rattlesnake on your left. You can't miss it. B. Martinez is a new dining room of the Rattlesnake Market and Cafe for art, belly laughs, and drink specials. Um, and that's what's happening at Rattlesnake Cafe. Up next, we got three women artists, um, and they're going to be at the Artist Shop. It's going to be mixed media, and it's going to feature uh, artist Andrea Morgan. And Hamilton artist, uh, du uh, Dulcie Bailanger, Be Langer, sorry about that, and Jennifer Ogden, uh, as they share a guest artist space for November in the artist shop. And artwork ranges from whimsical animal p portrayals to goddess-inspired sculptures and one family story on the day of the Women's March. Up next, we got uh, Here With Me, which is going to be at the Jeanette Rankin Peace Center uh, uh, through the art... Andrea Costello speaks of her ancestry depicted as myths surrounding the faces and natural world phenomenon encountered in life. The work often is represented like in dreamlike quality as through a deepest part of inserting itself into her life here in Montana. Up next, we got Nancy Erickson. Nancy Erickson is going to be at the uh, Gallery 709 inside Montana Art and Framing. And she's featured uh, artists with many other artists that are at the 709 Gallery, which is 709 Ronan Street. Um, it's 10th anniversary, which is going on from November 2nd to the 24th, with an exhib uh, exhibit featuring Nancy Erickson, the first artist to have a first Friday opening at the Gallery. That'd be cool. Um, and this is going to be open from... 5 to 9 p.m. So a lot of times, if you're interested, um, most um, First Fridays happen from 5 to 8 p.m. So if you're interested, you can do the downtown thing, and then you can jump on over, and you can check it out for the last hour. Uh, Pots by Amy, First Friday, noteworthy, noteworthy paper and press. Uh, you can join them for the November. Amy is a local Missoula maker and is currently a potter at the Clay Studio of Missoula. Who are Ceramics are for people who value both the handmade and the hands that make them. They are also each created with a functionality and aesthetics in mind and always one of a kind. Uh, I like how it flows. Um, first Friday, this can be at Gecko Designs, refueled. And just so you know, this isn't a picture. This isn't a, like a straight up painting. This is Joe Costello's refueled. Check it out. Uh, as a digital artist and design worker in Missoula, this series of a large canvas prints breathe new life in some of her favorite Missoula residents' automobiles who are past their prime, but more bright, bold, and lively than ever before. Up next, we got a long list, but this is going to be at Lake Missoula Tea Company. This is wood Woodblock Prints, Pie, and Live Music. David uh, Miles Lusk is an artist living and working out of Missoula. Uh, David received his Bachelor of Fine Arts with emphasis on printmaking at the university in 2014. He's still just a baby to me. Uh, he is inspired by the intersection of science and mythology and nature and humanity. Find out more about this at um, enamelpress.com. 
All right, we, we got a couple more for you guys, and this is our own backyard. First Friday, Berkshire Hathaway Home Service, Montana Properties. They have a little open house there, and they have photography shown by local artist John uh, Fekcho, um, titled Our Own Backyard. And although he's traveled in extensive throughout the West and beyond, he considers himself enamored by the which is familiar to himself and has truly learned to appreciate the beauty that we see all around us on a daily basis. Let's get to enjoy some wonderful photography by John. Up next, we got the Teapot Show Part 3. Um, this is the Clay Studio of Missoula. The Clay Studio of Missoula is proud to present the Teapot, teapot Story uh, Show Part 3. I think this is the, probably the third, an, third annual show. They have international cups, but this is one of their other shows where they're going to just have the teapot where the cups are uh, the teacups, whether it's poured into the cups. Anyways, uh, this popular exhibit, the third of its kind in the clay studio, will feature teapots and tea-related uh, wares from established and emerging ceramic artists. So I'll get an array of uh, creative ceramicists uh, today, all through the month of November. Up next is uh, Perpetua. Uh, uh, by George Yabara. George Yabara is going to be featured at the Four Ravens Gallery, and it's a uh, metal sculpture. Um, most recent series explores his personal connection and re uh, uh, reverence to the sea. Yabara, Yabara has worked with metal requiring a thunderous process of pounding, med melting, and fusing. Part of the passage of working with metal is the realization that the metal itself dictates where he takes his piece. Just as the ocean each year sculpts the changes of the coastline in a way that we cannot be foretold, Yabara is the artist for preservation. Uh, preservance and passages, uh, the tallest uh, piece of the public art in Montana, which stands at Silver Park along the Clark Fork River. So he was the artist. Yabara was the one who featured, uh, who uh, was um, uh, featured, uh, and his artwork will live on at Silver Park. So if you get a chance to go by Silver Park and see that giant metal structure, you can blame Yabara. Um, Moving on to the last, but not least, Missoula Art Museum always has a new art installation, and the new art installation is MAM's exhibits for free on first Friday each month from 5 to 8 p.m. Enjoy live music by KBGAO, No Host Bar, a unique art viewing um, experiences. Come stroll through the galleries and discover what MAM has to offer while KBJ expresses some um, fresh tunes. Enjoy all of the museum's exhibits interacting with MAM's bustling art community. Special thanks to the Missoula for more decades of support for first Fridays. And the ma'am, it's all about the ma'am. And speaking of the ma'am, I also have another art clip for you guys, which will be happening all through December and which features Steve Hunt, who is at the ma'am. So without further ado, here is another art clip. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about all the other events for you non-art people um, or non-art enthusiastic. So stay with me. <laughs> I just got a call from my uh, insurance, a my old insurance agency, and I forgot to tell them that I switched over. Uh, I forgot to say bye, Felicia. All right, so anyways, <laughs> let's talk about some events that are happening. Um, Friday, hey guys, do you hate your kids? Um, well, it's Candy Collection event, Operational Gratitude. Um, Nelson Dentistry, Dentistry is looking to uh, help 
send sweet treats to real life heroes. Nelson Dentistry is hosting a candy collection event for Operation Gratitude on Friday today from 8.30 to 6.30 p.m. And it's going to be at Nelson Dentistry. Have your kids donate a portion of their Halloween candy and any leftover Halloween candy that didn't get put in trick-or-treaters bag. And you can drop it for your candy or you uh, can write a quick thank you to our troops, veterans, and first responders. So it's not all about your kids. It can also be about the people who are missing out on Halloween. So donate your uh, excess candy to Nelson Dentistry. All right. If you're interested in having some indoor fun, hey, it's gonna, hey there's a wind advisory happening today. Why not go inside at Mismo, um, uh, Mizzou Indoor Sports Arena or Roots Acro Sports Center? All happening this morning and all happening pretty much all day um, indoors. Um, story time and tiny tales. You want your kids to be indoors, but you still want them to learn to read and whatnot. Hey, it's a good experience at the Missoula Public Library from 10:30 to about 11, 11:30. Gets the kids engaged. Uh, there's some reading. Kids get to read. Kids get to get experience with the books. It's a fun activity at the Missoula Public Library for the kids to do. They usually do this a lot of times at the public library Tuesday, Thursdays, Fridays, um, and also on Sundays in the later afternoons. But they, you can ch always check out MissoulaPublicLibrary.com for more information. Yarns and watercolor at Missoula Public Library as well. If you want to get a little artsy, there is space limited in some of these places. You might have the RSVP. You have to, might have to call 721-BOOK, which is 721, um, I think it's 6223. Don't quote me on that one. All right, anyways, um, yarns and watercolor at Missoula Public Library starts at noon. Cribbage and Bridge. Hey, you can't get enough of that Cribbage and Bridge at the Missoula Senior Center. You go there for lunch, stay there for Cribbage and Bridge. Story time with author Heather Vines, fact and fiction. Waddle, waddle, waddle. Quack, quack, quack. Why is Baxter so different from all his brothers and sisters? Um, come to story time at Fact and Fiction to find out. Meet the author of a children's book and learn about Baxter the duck and his big clumsy feet and enjoy an especially delicious duck cookie. After school fun with Endeavor and Missoula Public Library. Hey, if you guys are um, done with school and you want to have some Legos and board games, Missoula Public Library Endeavor has everything that you need to have a little bit of fun. But if you uh, want to get a little... Uh, uh, have a little more fun with a couple creepy crawlies. You guys can enjoy a predator feeding at Missoula Insectarium starting at 4 p.m., pretty much right after school. They get a, um, they will be feeding a cricket to one of the hungry predators at 4 p.m. on Friday. Join as they explain and demonstrate how they capture and consume their prey. Come see who's hungry today. And just so you guys know, you should, you should totally like um, – uh, Missoula Butterfly House uh, or Missoula Insectarium on their Facebook page because they just posted a um, a video of a spider shedding its own body and skin. It's really crazy. It's so crazy. It's so creepy and weird. It's just amazing. So you can check it out. Uh, UN Planetarium Public Show starting at 6 p.m. and also at 7.30 p.m. You can get tickets at gridsticks.com. Go to University of Montana. This is part of their planetarium shows. It might be overcast, but it's a planetarium show. I'm doing each public, um, the pro pro public program. They will take you on a tour of the current night sky of Missoula, pointing out noteworthy objects, constellation, planets, or upcoming events visible in the night sky. And that's going to be happening... Um, it's the it's part of the fall 2018 public shows. They do it uh, Friday evenings. Usually, uh, it's every other Friday. Tonight, they're going to try to do it from six to seven, and again seven thirty to eight thirty p.m. Festival of Remembrance. Hey guys, remember? Uh, I'm looking at the wrong camera. That's that one. Uh, <laughs> all right. So uh, last year, the Day of the Dead uh, parade uh, was um, got a lot of slack for cultural appropriation. So this year, they're back, uh, known, being known as Festival of Remembrance. Um, and this is going to be part of their 26th annual event. And it's going to start at the uh, Red X's downtown here in Missoula from at 6.30. The parade will start at 7.00. And then they'll have the post-parade performances at Karis Park at 7.30 p.m. It's going to be a short parade. Um, bring mementos of your loved ones past and walk the procession with them. So bring a picture of your old loved one and you get a parade down the street with some of your old pictures of people who you have lost. African Children's Choir. This is really cool. I almost, I almost totally skipped this one, but this is going to be at Missoula Alliance Church. Come join the African Children's Choir as they perform their community during their U.S. tour. This choir will perform at the church on Friday, Missoula Alliance Church, 7 p.m. tonight, and you can come experience a performance that shows a beauty of dignity of potential of each African child. Admission will be free of all ages, and free willing offerings will, will follow the choir's concert throughout their tour. 
And if you want even more performances, MCC Sister Act will be wrapping up this weekend. Uh, last performance, I believe, is on November 4th, which will be on Sunday. So MCT Sister Act, the musical, follows Sissy, Sister Mary Catherine um, Gallagher, um, Megatron, um, on her, uh, basically, she goes into witness protection when she uh, tries to flip on her mob gangster boyfriend, and she gets sent to a nunnery, uh, uh, and she becomes a nun, and she teaches, and through her uh, skills as a showgirl, teaches the girls, uh, teaches the other nuns how to sing as a unit. So it's, a, it's also a musical, so there's even more singing uh, in this version of Sister Act. Josh Farmer Band, I just want to give a shout out to my boy, Josh Farmer. Uh, he's going to be bringing their unique blend of jazz, funk, rock, and soul music at the Top Hat tonight at 710. But also, some of the other events that are happening at the VFW is going to be Fate's Fortune um, Rock Music and Semi-Precious Stones will be playing there as also uh, Oslot the Wizard. Um, Drop Culture will be at the Badlander. Monks, uh, First Friday will be at Monks. Um, inf inf insufficient Funds Band will be Country Rock Music at the Sunrise Saloon. Um, they have Much Light Charlie at the Union Club. And once again, Josh Farmer, my boy, will be playing at the Top Hat Lounge. Some wonderful music. He's a pianist, and he is amazing, just so you know. Um, here are some of the events for your Saturday. I just wanted to tell you guys, um, hey, Field trips are happening, and they're going to the Lee Metcalf NWR with Five Valleys Audubon, the Unum Adams Center parking lot. You get a meet in there. You get a meet at the parking lot um, early in the morning on a Saturday at 8.45 a.m., and you get to go to all-day field trip to Lee Metcalf National Wildlife Refuge. Um, eight, they, they'll meet at eight, around 8.45 a.m. They'll probably leave around 9 at the Adams Cent uh, Center parking lot. It's free. You just got to go, and you get to have a day adventure. Why not? Um, seventh annual art and craft show at the First Lutheran Church. Beautiful um, beautiful arts and crafts from local artisans. Homemade pies, available coffee, hot cocoa, lunch available, no admission charges. Big Sky High School Holiday Craft Fair is going to be at Big Sky High School starting at 9 a.m. It's going to happen pretty much all day, and it's going to be from 9 to 3 in the afternoon. Come shop for gifts, treats, stocking stuffers, and fine art all made by local artists and crafters. This event is open for all ages and there's no entrance fee. Their craft fair is also where our wheelchair and walker accessible concessions and a bake sale will also be open. If you're interested, okay, so hands-on science. Hey, Spectrum Discovery Center, they always open at 11 most days. Saturday, they'll be open at 10 a.m. and they're gonna do robotics and circuits. So it's gonna be really cool. You can check out Spectrum Discovery Center where kids get to learn and if you're under three, you get in free. And usually the admission for the cost is $3.50, so it's not a big deal. Uh, MCAT Saturday drop-ins, hey, every Saturday from one to 5 p.m. for only $10, kids get to hang out, make some videos, do some stop animation, and I'll have all sorts of fun here at MCAT. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> family Clay Workshop, November session. Um, Missoula Clay the Clay Studio of Missoula does a family workshop at the Clay Studio. And this is from 2 to 5 p.m. November 3rd, but they also have it happening on December 1st, so which is the first Saturday of the month uh, from 2 to 5 again. Uh, create something special with your loved ones. Um, the affordable family workshops are a perfect weekend for activities uh, for adults and children to do together. Hey, it's about that time for hockey season, and if you want your kids to be like, hey, I think this kid will really like hockey, give it a chance. Glacier Ice Rink is doing an event called Try Hockey for Free. Starting at 5 p.m., uh, kids ages 4 and over can try hockey for free on Saturday, and this is from 5 to 6 p.m. They have a clinic that starts at 7 p.m. where they have a little bit more with the coaches. You can coach it will be on hand... Um, hands-on to provide basic instruction and equipment is provided free of charge. Each participant, re uh, participant receives free admission to the Missoula Junior Bruins hockey game following the clinic at 7 p.m. So you get to check out hockey for free. You get to skate. You get to um, uh, get to do a, uh, what's that called? A hip check or something. You get to uh, just experience, you know, it's a full contact sport. And it's hockey. But, you know, you never know. It's, it's some kids like who, don't like some of the traditional sports that are provided at the school level, but this is a great way for kids to get involved with something completely different and something new. You never know what they like or they don't like if you don't try. So that's just a wonderful thing that you can try. Um, hockey in Missoula is something that wasn't as big, but is definitely very, very uh, awesome. All right, word of mouth. 
um, like uh, hockey, word of mouth is really good. But there's one is going to be at the Roxy. It's rediscover the power of words with three poets, three comedians, and three storytellers unite for one memorable night at the Roxy. At the Roxy, starting at 7 p.m., experience the ability of words to move you through the medium of spoken word poetry. Comedy and short stories in the, as Missoula's own inspire us to laugh, reflect, and reimagine the world in which we live in. Dance up close to the University of Montana. Hey, they're happening performances happening tonight uh, um, all weekend long at 7.30 p.m. with a Sunday performance at 2 p.m. Uh, the, wait, wait, is it? No, it's a, uh, wait, what is? No, it's actually Saturday matinee at 2 p.m. Sorry about that. They don't have a Sunday matinee. Forget what I said. It's a highlight of dance program seasons. This annual Black Box Showcase provides audiences with a chance to see new original work of emerging and established dancers um, in an intimate setting and give develop uh, being designers the opportunity to collaborate with those dancers. And it's going to be at the University of Montana. I believe it's room 005, which is just the basement of the Par TV building, but you may need to double check to see where it's at exactly. But it's going to be at the University of Montana Par TV building. I know that for sure because they usually do it there. All right, Dance Up Close, University of Montana, 7.30 p.m. If you're interested in doing other events on your Saturday night, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net and more to find out what's exactly happening in Missoula. Hey, what's going on, Missoula? MissoulaEvents.net. I was like, oh, but can you just tell me? No. Oh, I actually kind of did just tell you. I was like, oh, but there's more. There's always more. But I just kind of highlighted a lot of things that you guys uh, can go check out. So you go check out this first Friday. It's a great way to enjoy some art in the downtown Missoula area. So why not go around? They have hors d'oeuvres, they have wine, they have beer, all sorts of things happening in like 18, 20 plus locations in the downtown Missoula area and beyond for first Friday. So without further ado, I want to thank you guys for joining me this weekend. Um, I hope you guys have a good weekend. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. So have a good day. Mm -hmm.